All right, guys, what are we talking about today? What exciting, stupid thing do we have going on today on Food Theory? Oh, came prepared. Let's see. <clears throat> Congratulations! This video is so bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, this video is so bad and full of misinformation. Considering how many wrong things there are in your game and film theory channels, this somehow doesn't surprise me. <laughs> oh dear, this took a turn. Thank you for being the creator to finally speak up about food theory. They put out a lot of misinformation on all of their channels. I feel like that's being a bit harsh. I, I mean, sure, Sans isn't an ass and Hollow Knight isn't the old king, but a, but a lot of information. It feels a bit aggressive. After seeing this, I'm convinced Matt Pat is a shill for the vegan and organic industry. <laughs> I feel like my affection for McDonald's and my love of steak would disagree, but... Sure, you do you, friend. Uh, you stole this from Brew. Similar thumbnail and content. Shameful. Oh, jeez, now we're stealing thumbnails, apparently. It's gonna be one of those days. Also, um, for the record, I actually haven't heard of the Brew channel, but I'm absolutely gonna look it up. I personally suggest you take down and or remake a video about this topic again. It would have actually been a good video if you did some sort of research. You know what? Uh, comment, I can actually agree with that one. A good video does do good research, and... I would say 99% of the time, I feel pretty darn confident about the research that me and the rest of the team does when we're working on these episodes. Uh, that said, you know, sometimes things slip through the cracks, but rarely is it something major enough to take down a whole video, so, you know what? Let's do it! Let's look at this toxic information that we've put out into the world and see if it holds up or not. Have I actually lied to you? Today, let's decide the fate of a video. Does it remain up online or should we be taking it down? No intro today, friends. Let's just hop into it. Hello, internet. Welcome to Food Theory, the show that apparently lies to you, needs to do more research, is a shill for veganism and apparently steals thumbnails. Now, if you need a context for any and all of that, back in February, we covered the milk industry on this channel, exposing the propaganda machine that gets people to keep consuming dairy products, despite the fact that the majority of humans on planet Earth are biologically programmed to become lactose intolerant in adulthood. Then, about a month ago, a video popped into my feed by the channel, how to Cook That, hosted by food scientist, dietitian, and published cookbook author Anne Reardon. In short, this is someone who knows her stuff when it comes to food and has made a name for herself debunking popular food videos online. Which is why I trembled in fear when her name got mentioned in the video. And uh, let's just say that my reaction wasn't entirely unwarranted. There are so many videos out there already that say stop drinking dairy, including this one from Food Theory, which is very, very similar in the look of the thumbnail and the content of the video to this one that was from Brew two years earlier. Oh, the subtle suggestion of plagiarism. We are starting off real strong. Here's the thing, regarding the thumbnail, it's a calcium meme. Skeletons, strong bones. We knew that we wanted to riff off of the whole calcium meme thing and we wanted skeletons holding or drinking milk and like I said, none of us were actually aware of that other video. I, I, I can't expressly prove it, but I was in every thumbnail discussion. Hours of my life wasted and no one once brought it up, so it's just coincidence. Great minds think alike. Uh, though, I will say, looking up the Brew channel now, this definitely seems to be a channel that is up my alley. Uh, the tagline, solving mysteries one cup at a time. Ooh, I think I found my new favorite YouTube channel for the next month. From that auspicious start, her video is spent responding to common questions that people have about the dairy industry in general, ranging from the environmental sustainability of dairy farms to the environmental impact of dairy alternatives. And I'm not going to go into detail about any of that stuff because it wasn't a focus of our original video. Those are different topics for a different day. I am here specifically to address Anne's concerns to food theory, which honestly only account for around three and a half minutes of her video's total 20 minute runtime, and a lot of that time is actually spent agreeing with us. For example, Anne mentions the nutritional benefit of calcium for growing kids. No one is debating do kids need calcium for their bones to grow. In fact, studies have shown that if you don't have enough calcium,
calcium, you won't grow as tall as if you have enough calcium. And yeah, she's right. Nobody is debating this. In fact, we made the exact same observation in our own video. Well, it turns out that milk does have a few clear-cut benefits. For one, milk has been clinically shown to make children grow taller. Not kidding. It's estimated that if you add an additional serving of milk to a child's diet every single day, they may add a full centimeter to their final adult height. One of the big points that we focused on in the last milk video we did here on Food Theory is how it's after childhood that consuming milk becomes more complex. And again, it's something that Anne agrees with. Here is our video. And a mother's milk, with its complex mixture of nutrients, vitamins, proteins, beneficial bacteria, antibodies, and lymphocytes, act as a literal power shake for babies. And the thing is, by the time people hit 20, our bodies are designed to no longer produce enough lactase to break down milk. And here's Anne saying basically the exact same thing. Now most people have that enzyme, they make it in their bodies, when they're babies because they need to be able to absorb the breast milk that they're being fed and then as they get older the amount of that enzyme can decrease. There's only about a third of people in the world who that enzyme doesn't decrease. Outside of tracking the history of lactose intolerance, the rest of our video was basically dedicated to the advertising practices of the milk industry. How pro-milk ads that are designed to look like public health announcements actually come from private organizations whose funding mostly comes from milk producers. And our little expose on the milk industry's marketing tactics, which really was the meat and potatoes of that episode, isn't something that Anne disputes. In fact, of our entire 14 minute long episode, the the only part that she wound up disagreeing with were two sentences right at the very end. A total of 37 words out of a total 2,600 word script. In a paragraph where I briefly review alternative ways of getting calcium, I say this. Green vegetables like broccoli and kale, more calcium than milk. If you hate green things, just try eating some beans. You know, those fun little round guys that come in burritos and chili, more calcium than milk. This is the part that she clips out and reacts to, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but first, it's worth noting all the stuff around it that she cut out, because here's the rest of the clip. Tofu, also a primary source of protein and calcium in places in the world where lactose intolerance is high and it's both cheaper and healthier than milk. You know what else has the nutrients of milk in a pinch? A good calcium supplement and a vitamin D drop from the grocery store or pharmacy. And these she doesn't dispute because honestly there's no disputing them. These are better alternatives to drinking a glass of milk but clipping out the ones that we definitely got right and not acknowledging them makes it seem like our video was irresponsible and full of a bunch of misinformation when again none of it was actually the focus of the episode in the first place, but okay, let's just get back to her main point. The stuff about kale, broccoli, and beans. Here's Anne's take. They say in their video that broccoli and kale have more calcium than milk, and they show a picture of cabbage, not kale. Ew, yikes, yeah, that's a that's a big oof there. We definitely deserve every hit for that one. It was totally our bad. We even had our resident vegetarian review the episode, and even she didn't catch it. It's not an excuse, just slipped through the cracks of everyone watching the episode. But honestly, that visual mistake isn't the main point. It's not why people are calling for the removal of our video. It's the possible misinformation that was contained within that section. So let's actually review that, shall we? So let's do a comparison. To get that 300 milligrams of calcium that you get in one glass of milk, you would need to eat 222 grams of kale. And you might think that's easy, I eat that much in a day. But I can guarantee if you put that in front of a child, that is a lot of kale to get them to eat, especially if they need more than one serve of dairy in a day. That's quite a lot. Let me interrupt to say that she is definitely right about kids not wanting to eat this amount of kale. As a father of a three-year-old, he'd sooner eat a Lego than a leafy vegetable. That said, while this provides a powerful visual as like, wow, look at all this kale, it actually condenses down quite nicely into like smoothie form. And then goes on to explain that we're technically correct about kale having more calcium than milk if we're talking about calcium per gram. Now, technically, gram for gram, this has slightly more calcium. <laughs> technically correct. The best kind of correct. However, she then goes on to suggest that rather than comparing a gram of kale to a gram of milk, it would make more sense to compare a single serving of kale to a single serving of milk. And if you do the comparison that way, well, milk comes out on top. But to say that it has more calcium than milk is a bit deceptive because a serve of kale is not this much kale. If you're looking at serve to serve, milk has a lot more calcium in it. This is actually a great point to bring up, and it's 
it's it's something that I've been meaning to talk about on the channel for a while now. Talking about food amounts is... It's complicated to say the least. For instance, say you wanted to compare the number of calories in a glass of milk versus a can of Coca-Cola. Well, let's do it and suggest it and compare one serving size to one serving size. After all, it's printed right on the label so it should be easy enough to do, right? So one serving of this 2% milk has 130 calories, while the nutrition label on our can says this can, one serving size, has 140 calories. This acidic sugar water is obviously more caloric than milk, right? As you might expect, this is supposed to be really unhealthy for you. But wait a minute, let's look at the numbers again, because here's the thing, the nutrition label for the milk is based on a serving size of 240 milliliters, one cup or around eight fluid ounces. The can of Coke, meanwhile, is based on this single can, 355 milliliters or 12 ounces, very different. In other words, a regular 12 ounce can of Coke has more calories if you're comparing it to an eight ounce cup of milk. If we do some simple arithmetic, we can actually see that if we were comparing one cup of each fluid, that would actually come out to the milk having 130 calories, like we knew, and the Coke actually coming out less, 93 calories less than the milk. I do this little comparison not as a means of saying like, oh, Coca-Cola is healthier than milk. Obviously, it's not. It's like acidic sugar water. It's terrible for you. They have vastly different nutritional content. I'm just using this to illustrate a point here. One serving is not always the same as one serving. And that's even true when you're comparing identical food products. Case in point, look at the nutritional content for this 20 ounce bottle of Coke. Here, it defines the entire 20 ounce bottle as the single serving leading to completely different numbers than when we were looking at just the can itself. I could certainly name more examples, but hopefully you see my point here. If you use one serving as the basis for a comparison, it's easy to end up with distorted pictures because serving sizes are just defined inconsistently, especially when you're comparing foods across different food groups like a leafy green vegetable and a beverage. And a lot of times the serving size has more to do with what it's been packaged in than the actual amount of stuff that you're getting. I mean, sure, one serving or a cup of milk has more calcium than one serving or a cup of kale, but the kale has fewer calories. Comparing one cup of leafy green vegetable to one cup of nutrient-rich liquid isn't exactly a one-to-one -one comparison either. So for our information, we tried to standardize that comparison as much as possible. And since a gram is a gram is a gram, no matter what you're talking about, we compared a gram of milk to a gram of raw kale and beans, only to find that, yeah, the kale and beans had more calcium per gram than milk. We didn't even try considering serving sizes and portion sizes because, well, we didn't really think to. We didn't think we had to. We were just focused on the cleanest possible comparison. But obviously it takes a lot more kale to make up a single gram, which winds up giving you that big massive plate of kale like she pulls out in her video. So if you're looking at serve to serve, milk has a lot more calcium in it than kale. So which one of us is right? Well, the answer is both of us. We were just using different systems of measurement. And mind you, these aren't even the only two ways to look at the situation. For instance, we could be looking at the amount of calcium per calorie. Would that be a better way of measuring calcium content? Uh, this is the sort of thing that comes up all the time when you're asking questions like, how much of ketchup is actually garlic powder? Or how much of this condiment is added sugars? You'll come up with different answers depending on whether you're calculating by the weight, by the volume, or where the calories are actually coming from. Calling this sort of thing an apples to oranges comparison isn't doing it any sort of justice because we're literally just comparing a food to itself and we're just using different modes of measure. And if all of that wasn't complicated enough already, you have the added layer of bioavailability to consider. Now, I've mentioned this before during our spinach episode, but the long and short of it is that just because a food contains a certain amount of nutrient doesn't necessarily mean that your body is able to use all of that nutrient. Case in point, spinach, absolutely packed with iron, but studies show that in some cases you're only getting about 2% of that able to be absorbed into the body. A pittance compared to what you'd actually get from other foods like, say, steak or even dark chocolate, which have it in a form that's much more bioavailable. So even when we have what seems to be like a perfect one-to-one -one comparison, one milligram of iron is not the same thing as one milligram of iron depending on the food source. And likewise, one milligram of calcium is not the same as one milligram of calcium. So 
Since neither Anne nor I explicitly talked about this in our respective episodes, let's do it now, shall we? According to Dr. Connie Weaver, professor of food and nutrition at Purdue University, who literally wrote the book on calcium and human health, I have a digital copy of it, so I'm pretending to hold a physical copy of it. Can we just After Effects this in? Awesome, thanks editors. Now let's After Effects it off, because I'm done introducing it. Great, there it goes. Our bodies can absorb about 32% of the calcium inside of milk, whereas calcium inside of vegetables is gonna vary wildly. Worst case scenario, we're talking about spinach, <laughs> which continues to get dunked on in our episodes because only about 5% of that calcium is bioavailable. But for other brassica vegetables, the family that includes kale and broccoli, that number is actually significantly higher than milk. Broccoli, for instance, can get as high as 60%. That is nearly twice the amount that you're gonna be getting out of milk. And that makes all the difference in the world when you're comparing the calcium in both of these. Mm. I don't even know how they thought that broccoli had more calcium than milk because it doesn't even gram for gram. I'm not sure where they got that from. Since you asked, let's actually get to where that information came from. According to the University of California San Francisco Medical Center, one cup of milk has 300 milligrams of calcium, just like Anne points out in her video. Well, the same amount of cooked broccoli has 180 milligrams of calcium, which at first blush would seem to support what Anne is saying. Milk has more calcium than broccoli. However, let's now apply the numbers that we brought up with discussing Dr. Connie Weaver's calcium research. Of the calcium that's produced in both of these, 108 milligrams of calcium would be coming into your body from the broccoli, while you would only be able to absorb 96 milligrams of calcium from the milk. So the broccoli ultimately wins out per serving. Another reason we might have actually come to different conclusions here is that we might just be looking at different sources, which is why I'm trying to be specific about where our numbers are coming from. The numbers from the USDA website actually are different, but they're talking about raw broccoli instead of cooked. In my research, I also discovered that the reported calcium level for broccoli tended to vary based on the source that you were looking at. And one reason for that, I suspect, is that the nutritional content varies based on whether you're talking about the florets, the very top, versus the stalk or the stem. So yeah, I don't think that we were wrong in this case. Even if we do, as Anne suggests, and compare one serving of broccoli to one serving of milk, looking at the amount of calcium that our bodies can actually absorb from each of these food sources ultimately means that broccoli beats milk. Even if Anne is technically correct about milk having more calcium in it. Now, I don't bring any of this up to say that Anne was wrong on a particular point. Like I said, she is technically correct, just like she said I was technically correct about the gram for gram stuff. The best kind of correct. But I think all of this illustrates an important point. When it comes to nutrition and food science, it is really hard to tell the full story. Even bioavailability can change based on the foods that you're eating together as part of a meal. If you mix citrus in with spinach, it's a whole new ball game. Even directly comparing food labels doesn't paint you the full picture because our bodies just process different foods in different ways. The TLDR of this whole video is this. On food theory and across all the theory channels, I and the rest of the team do our research. We do a lot of research, and I hope that this episode has shown you a little bit of that. And so when people say that we don't do our research, we take that very seriously. And in doing that research, we do our best to find a balance. We try to make sure that we're giving you information that is true to the best of our knowledge, but also useful. I always do my best to include the facts that I think are going to paint the full picture for the narrative, but also there are just limits in how thorough we can be in any given video. Case in point, look at what we're doing right now. We're wrapping up a 20-minute response video responding to a three and a half minute segment from another channel that in turn was reacting to a 20 second clip of our original video. I mean, that 20 second clip of offhanded comments has suddenly ballooned into this 20 minute spectacular full of nutritional science and food labeling. If we went one inception level deeper, I'd be like, I don't know, I'd be like, doing a 90 minute dissertation on bioavailability, which something tells me no one is gonna have the patience for. So am I taking down that original video? No, I don't think we need to. Did I lie to you or purposely misrepresent information? No. Would it have been better for me to compare serving sizes like Anne suggested rather than weight? You know, I don't know. I, I'm still not sure on that one. But will these sorts of things happen again? Yeah. 
honestly, most likely. As I said, food is just a subject with a lot of nuance and a shocking amount of misinformation out there, but I am more than happy to sit down on the couch and do response videos like this one, trying to clarify all of this as we continue to figure out the best way to cover the complicated world of food. And rest assured, there is absolutely one thing I feel confident in promising you. I will never again make the mistake of confusing this cabbage with this kale. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Kale to the camera. Bottoms up.